Hello everyone, this is Gally and this is a new episode of Draw with Galidor. So, this one is not about dragons, but we're going to learn to draw a, an animal. This time it's a lion or a lioness, and this was suggested by one of the watchers. So, by Water Vini. We're going to do some practice drawings or sketches on the structural um, elements of the lions so we can see what they're made of. So as you can see, I grabbed different pictures and I put them all together in Photoshop, but in different layers. So you can also grab them all and put them in a folder. Just like that. So now you can hide them anytime. So we'll start first with looking at, you know, the pictures of these beautiful animals. And we can see the differences are very obvious. So as you can see, like one has a mane and the other one has, hasn't got a mane, a mane. But they're really almost the same if you discount with the, the fur and stuff. So they're the same animal mostly. Not such big differences in colors and in shape. So I'm going to grab a flashy color just to let me draw on top of this. I will choose perhaps a light blue color. And grab a brush and start drawing on top as we've seen in the other videos. So as we can see, just look at the shapes for now. We can see that he has the hinge of his jaw right there. They have like a, a box box face. If you can see anything can be turned into a shape. So if you want a different approach to this, I don't know, it will be to make them a triangular shape. So, yeah. Your line is looking like Yeah, so tri triangles and squares at what comprise the shapes or the faces of lines. These are two side views, but you can see that um, it's like a, a box thing, and then triangles. So you have to see first the shapes, and in that relationship, where are the eyes and the nose located? So we're going to hide this layer. For example, you can see that between the circle that is a lioness face, you can draw the snout, and the snout connects to the circle here, because it's a longer figure that sticks out the main part of the face. If we lower the opacity on this, you can see clearly how this is a different shape. Is to make it look a little more 3D. Simplify the shapes, don't add details yet, just like focus on the main shape. And then in relationship to this, you can see that she doesn't have the eyes here. Her eyes are above, very near the snout, on top of the whiskers, you know, so it will follow this path. And then we just have to draw the way. This is an example, you don't have to draw what I'm drawing. I'm just giving you tips to recognize the anatomy. So as you can observe, their eyes are very close together. They're not that separate. And right above where the eye ends, right here, the ear starts. the same here. So there you have a circle and a bunch of triangles which is the same thing. So as you can see where the eye ends you have the start of the ear and the eyes and the ears are also the same level. And then with this one you can see the circle which was blue it's right here And then, you can see the square-like protrusions from 
the skull. If I can recommend an artist to show you how to do this, it would be Aaron Blaze and Tander Ella. I will write them down. Ta -da -da. He's a great artist from Disney. And the other one is a DeviantArt artist and also Instagram, who will have a, her own feature video soon. I hope I'm writing this correctly. If I'm not, just Google Code Lions and she'll go. She'll appear. So these two people know how to do their felines very well. And they can help you with this. They have tutorials and beautiful drawings. And I don't know if she has tutorials, but I've seen her show the process she does for drawing. So you might get an idea on how to draw felines like that. So now we can see that these lions have fangs only in the top part and the bottom part of their mouths. They don't have teeth like this. So that's a very good thing to note if you're drawing a, a lion. Just don't don't draw a lot of fangs. First observe what you're drawing and then go ahead. So as we can see right here, we can see the kind of teeth they have. It's like two super big fangs on top and big fangs on the bottom. These fangs help to grapple their prey. It's like this is the animal and then this is the neck of the unfortunate victim who just died. No blood. This is no mature content. So yeah, that's what they use this for. To actually grab onto their prey and then rip it apart. So then we have four small teeth in the middle. I don't know if you can see them. A little tiny, tiny, tiny fangs and then this four. I'm not going to go into the real names of those teeth because one, I don't know them, and two, it's not needed. As you can see, this is a very interesting shape. It's like a heart. Uh, a cartoon heart, not a real anatomically correct heart. That would be weird. So, you can see this is like in the middle. And then on the sides, from the big, big part of the maw, you can find the big um, fans. Another four tiny teeth, and then two small fangs, and two big ones. So as you can see it here, two big fangs, two big fangs, and the other tiny ones are either here, or hiding here, or hiding here underneath. So you cannot see that. They are there, but you can see. These are the molars. So they go hidden underneath. The mouth when he opens it. He or she. So, as you can see, he has a very tiny uh, and thin mandible connected to what we will call the skull or se, cranium. And the eyes would go here. I always recommend drawing on top of things to understand. Not just to copy mindlessly, but to understand what you're doing. Because if you only copy and do nothing, you just get a bunch of lines and you're not understanding what you're doing. So if you ever wanted to put, you know, the eyes on an animal, you would understand what they are and you wouldn't actually put the eyes here or something. So, And as we talked about, if he had fur or something, the ending of the eye would connect to the beginning of the ear. So now you would know where to put, you know, the ears. And if you saw the nose, it's gonna... Let's see what the nose looks. So the nose is pretty much something that has a flat shape on the top. Beautiful curve. And a little partition in the middle. You can reference other things, but I would recommend referencing pictures instead of the Lion King and other drawings, because even though they're really pretty, they have to focus on real-life animals first. If you just copy a style, you're missing out on the wider 
variety of styles that you can have making your own animals. So if you just copy Lion King, you will be copying the way they do noses, the way they do ears or eyes, and then even though it will look good, you're missing out on your own style. So my recommendation is grab your own photos or somebody else's reference, do studies, draw a lot, and then you will understand how the lions are shaped and what they do and, you know, how their eyes look. They're rounded, for example, and they have this little pupil, and they're surrounded by black. Their eyes don't look, I don't know, like this, with white, or, you know? So if you try to make your own lions with your own style, I strongly recommend you go for nature first before you go to anything else. So it's okay to copy other people's um, styles to learn to make yours. It's okay to copy pictures or to reference, you know, it's okay. But try to learn from what you are actually copying, not just do it out of, you know, normal copying methods. So for this study, as we saw, we had the nose and we had the, the teeth, but I want to show you how the nose looks on the side. When they are roaring or maybe sighing, they have, the nose is not up here, it has a little covering, this, and this thing right here is here. So you have your nose. No, we're gonna try to draw a lion on top of a skull. <laughs> but say hello, hello. Okay. So this is the one I wanted to show. So I grabbed a, a picture of a lion skull. You see how wonderful it is. Well, now that we have some tips on how to actually draw it, how about we go? So this might not be fully percent accurate. I recommend you do this exercise so you can understand. So imagine you have the eyes right here. And oh my god, I don't remember what to do. Well, go look at your pictures. So you can see, for example, how the eyes are here. Then there's a slant connecting the circle. Remember? As I see, this is a little too small. So what you can do is actually make this bigger. So you saw the other thing, the slanting part. So what does this look like? Does it look like a lion? No. Why doesn't it look like a lion? Because the head is too small. And this one doesn't go like this. So again and again, you have to practice how to make your shapes. If you cannot do that, you have to look at the shapes first. So if you don't want to do the whole circle and thing, this is a skull. And then we have the more covering the teeth in the front and revealing the ones in the bottom. So once again, go back to your drawing. Do a bigger circle. And again, and again, and again. If you can't do it, if you really feel like this is, you know, very hard, just reference, it's fine. Like, nobody's going to come here and be like, hey, why aren't you doing, you know, a correct lion or something? Unless you're in class and that's what you're tasked to do. Don't overboard in yourself, just try to learn. So this one, for example, looks more like a lion. And you remember when this ends, the ear begins. So then you can start drawing on top without feeling so bad. I'm going to erase this a little bit more. And then we can see that their necks are thick, they're heavy. I'm not going to go through their whole anatomy, that will be too long. And I might get some parts wrong. For example, if you look at this, you're thinking that looks like it's broken. Well, yeah, 
What do you have to do when that happens? When you don't know how muscles go and, I don't know, you make your lion literally look like this and it's too thin. Don't just grab the skeleton, go and find the muscle. Study the, the whole body. Try first without anything else. Just your own kind of you knowledge. Go for what you think you know about the creature you're drawing. And just draw it. So you can see she has long, powerful legs. And then in this beautiful elongated leg, you can see that her toes are down, like in cats, normal cats. You see their feet are, this part is not so long as, I don't know, this part. Go look for the muscles. You can see that the tail is attached to the base of the hip bone, how long it is, all those things. They come with time and practice, okay? So if you don't get it right, don't beat yourself up. It takes a lot of tries to learn how to draw something new. And every animal is different. Humans are different, horses are different, birds, fish, you get my idea. So if you don't get it right, Keep practicing, keep trying to understand the animal you, you chose to draw, how the muscles work, why they move the way they do, how long their tails are, and once you understand that and draw them for a while, not only will you be able to draw that, you will be able to draw a lot more, because that's, that's the point of learning. Nobody, at least nobody I know, maybe there are some exceptions, know how to draw things without even, you know, researching first, but I do believe most of us can't. So then just like grab reference from the internet, you have that tool, it's a wonderful tool. And try to understand like how, how things work, why they look, how they look. Creators, especially artists and designers, we have this magnificent gift to look at the world and try to redesign it, to make something new out of something that already exists. In this case, I make dragons from different animals, for example. You can make your own characters, human and otherwise, live in different worlds and have, for example, lion attributes, if it's a human with lion attributes. Like, this looks very rudimentary, it looks very simple. Very, even like a hand, like a normal person's hand. But that's because I don't know how the muscles go. So I would go to the internet, reference some lion toes, and learn how, for example, how their paws look, how they are soft underneath, and then they have this strong padding, and then the claw just goes underneath, and that's why it can hide inside this thing. They're retractable, just like cats. So if you have a cat at home, try to play around. Haha. <laughs> so yeah, you just make silhouettes. Keep them simple, keep them fast. Try to get yourself an idea of how the posing of the animal works so you don't get, you know, too complicated. Just keep it simple. Play around. Play around with your character. Try to understand the line. Trying to put, I don't know, the mane and the male eye and see how far it goes. How long their neck is. How fat can they be. How thick. Should their legs be, you know? How they look like when they hunt. How fast can they run? All those things will come in time if you try to learn. This we just looked at some pieces of a lion, but there's so much to learn from each animal. Like what I really enjoy about these animals is the way they hunt together, how they live their social life, how their bodies are built to crush and run and bite and you know. They're different from other felines as well, so if you want to do this, go Google, go reference, and please just have fun with it.
check these people out. I might do uh, some videos on them. So if you like this, please subscribe and click the bell icon on the top of my profile. It will keep you updated on when I submit new videos. So thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.